It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today, I'm super excited to bring you an Imperial Goza. <laughs> so Goza is a style of beer that comes from the Goza region of Germany. Um, there's a river called Goza, and that river is slightly salty. Uh, naturally, with the rocks and the, 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 the geological kind of profile around that area, it means that the river water is salty. Um, back in the day, back in the day, hundreds of years ago, the German people didn't really kind of know that. There wasn't much science back out there in the day. So somebody set up a brewery and they used the river water, the salty river, river water. And they probably thought to themselves, oh, what bad luck. You know, oh my goodness me, why have we done this? Um, because... They, they probably brewed one or two types of beer that, that were really salty and really didn't work um, because they didn't have any really method, no methods back in the day to, to like soften water, to treat water. It was a case of back in the day, you got what you were given. If you set up a, a brewery on the side of a river where the water was salty, tough luck, sunshine. But of course, cleverly, um, brewers were able then to in their own way manipulate what the beer could be so they started up their own beer style and they called it a goza so this is a naturally salty beer incredible really isn't it when you think about it um, but this beer is not from germany this beer is from finland and it's not a normal goza which is probably about four percent abv this is an imperial goza at eight percent abv called stars of darkness and it's by a rather brewing company there's little there's a nice picture on the front of the can with blackberry what looks like marshmallow and cherries so this could be a really interesting beer let's have a little read sour ale with black cherries Morello cherries, black currant, licorice, pink Himalayan salt, and marshmallows. Yeah, this is going to be really interesting. This is going to test me, this one. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Thank you very much to Buddy Visor for sending me this beer. Um, thank you very much to Arava Brewing Company in Finland for brewing this beer. This could be a real test, a real, real test of my beer reviewing skills, if you like. Let's get the beer out into a glass, see what we get. Always, I mean, look at the can, always, they fill the cans with beer. They don't mess about in Finland. You get what you pay for. A big can of, you know, almost overfilled beer. But I like that. I'd rather an overfill than an underfill. So, good levels of carbonation rolling up the side of the glass. The head has dissipated quite quickly. I'm happy with that. I'm happy that the head has dissipated quite quickly because when you get a traditional goza or a traditional kind of Belgian lambic, the head hisses and fizzes away very quickly. That's exactly what's happened here. So, already I'm happy. Already I'm happy with the initial style of the beer. If this had a great big fat head on it, I, I've, I've, I've bought supermarket sour beers in the past and they've had great big heads on them. I'm like, what on earth is this? Why has why this sour beer got a head? Um, it shouldn't have a head. A sour beer like this should not have a head. It should look like this. This looks like dark cherry, doesn't it? That Morello cherry, it looks like dark cherry. Um, let's get the aroma. I said this is going to test me. Yeah, this is going to test me to the brink. This is going to be like, um, you know, Lewis Hamilton, you need to push now. You need to push now. You need to put a fast lap in. You need to put a qualifying lap in. You know, you need to concentrate all of your experience and, 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 and years of driving a Formula One car. You need to put it to the on the track now and, and, and put in a fast lap. Very much like myself, I've been reviewing beer for, for 12 years. We drank 9,000 beers 
this is the moment where I stand here and I have to put that 12 years of experience to the test. It smells incredible. I'm not comparing myself to Lewis Hamilton in one iota. I'm just using it as an example. For all you people already furiously commenting in the comments box. Sweet cherry, dark sour cherry. A little bit of that kind of fluffy sweet marshmallow. Definitely sour, definitely a sour beer. Let's dive in. Uh. Pardon me. Cheers, everybody. Oh. Right, is it salty? Yes. Yes. Um, it's, it, it's very tough with a goza. If you've ever been on holiday, or if you've ever swam in the sea, every now and again you get a mouthful of seawater. And it doesn't taste like normal water, does it? It really doesn't taste like normal water. It's, uh, like, incredibly salty. And it's got a real, it's almost got a, a different feel to, like, tap water or, or, or spring water it got a, it's got more of a slickness to it salty water and as much as brewers when they brew these gozers as much as they try and get away from that as much as they possibly can there's still a little element of that kind of slightly slick slightly oily salty seawater taste to it I think that's the reason why Arava Brewing Company, brewing an 8% Imperial Goza, um, they've decided to add lots of really big, strong flavours to the beer. So that Morello Cherry, it's really sweet, but it's really sour. The Sweet Cherry, the Red Cherry, it's really kind of, again, sweet and sour. It's full on, it's like poof, almost popping your eyeballs out of your head. But I like it. I like it. It's got a very small touch of like a soy sauce. Like a soy sauce. Um, very, very small amounts of like balsamic vinegar coming through. And that comes from, through from the sourness of the beer. The, the sharpness of the beer. That Morello cherry. That, that sweet cherry. A really interesting drink. That kind of black currant as well. Oh, blimey. I always find it a fun drink. I always find sour beer a fun, interesting drink. If I was to do this to this drink, put a lid on it like that, a, bit, a little kind of covering, put it in the fridge, Wait for my wife to come in from work and said, try that. She would absolutely love this beer. And many do. Many, many people do. I drink in a craft beer bar called um, Craft Republic. It's in Barry. I'm very proud of the place. It's local to us. Um, and they serve a multitude of different beers. Pale ales, lagers, IPAs, sour beer, stout, porter, imperial stout. You know, that sort of thing. And... It's always, when we go out drinking with our friends, they always order sour beer first. If this was on the menu, I can guarantee it, if this was on the menu at Craft Republic, my wife, my mate, and my mate's wife would order two thirds of this. Easily, two thirds of this. And they'd be like, oh, I'd be sitting there watching them, like screwing up their faces. And it's nice, isn't it, in, in the craft beer world, to sit there, and watch people enjoy different beers. It's, it's part of why we're all in it. Is because there's so much variety in, in beer. And it's so much fun. And, and you know, you're never going to taste the, set, the same beer twice. Type of thing. 
but it's funny because because I'll, I'll always kind of like steer clear from it. I'll always kind of go, oh, you know, uh, I'll have an IPA, please, or I'll have a blooming. If they have a mild, if they have like a mild on, like a, like a traditional British, I'll have a mild. It's funny, isn't it? funny, funny when I go out drinking, funny, or you know something. I'll have a double IPA, of course I will, but. You know, this type of thing, I'm generally kind of... I appreciate it. I like it. I like the boundaries that the breweries push when they produce beers like this. Um, but if you were to ask me, would I order another one? If I tried this and went, you know, would I have another one? I'd, I'd be like, probably not. My taste is kind of adjusting to it now. I want to. I'm, I'm sure I'm picking up licorice now as well. Uh, let's have a look. Sour ale, um, black cherries, morello cherries, black and licorice. Ah, oh, there we are. There is licorice in the beer. So when you let's read the rest of the flavors. Um, pink Himalayan salt and marshmallows. So the interesting thing about sour beer, and what I love about sour beer is that when you get over those initial flavours, those initial flavours of salt, those initial flavours of the sourness, the initial cherry, that the, the, like blasts your palate. When your palate adjusts to it, and when your palate settles down to the beer, you're then able to pick up the other flavours in the beer, like you pick up the malt. But there was something I just picked up in the last taste, that licorice. It's only a very slight flavour. It's a very small flavour, but it's definitely there. There's a little lick of licorice in this beer, which makes it very good. In terms of sour beer, as far as sour beers go, I like this one. I'm going to rate it. It's I'm saying it's sour beer. It's a gozer, isn't it? It's a salty gozer. But that cherry's making it quite sour. I like it. I think it's a really, really good example of a of a of a Goza style beer from wonderful Finland, of a German style beer. It's a nine out of ten. Nine out of ten from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.